In part 1, we saw that the identity of the Jews who went to Palestine isn't what we're told. They were refugees, not colonialists. In this part, we will see that the identity of the Palestinians is not what we're told. The Jews? Zionists steal the ancient country of Palestine from the ancient indigenous Palestinians. The key words here are Palestine and Palestinians. What is Palestine? Okay, because Palestine is non-existential. Uh, and uh, it was never a country. It's not ethnic group. It's not a religion. It's not a faith. It's a colonial entity created by the British that lived for about 25 years. And Jews, Arabs, Druze, Christians, Zionists, um, were called Palestinians before uh, the termination of the British mandate. It was called the British mandate of Palestine. So the mandate itself uh, had the name Palestine. If Palestine is not what we thought, then who are the Palestinians? There is no such thing Look, as Palestinians. There are Arabs. The Arabs who identify as Palestinian did not do so until around the time the Palestine Liberation Army, PLO, was formed in the 1960s, decades after Israel became a state. Once you grasp that the Palestinians, though they amply deserve well-being, are anachronistic as a people victim, you can better see past the entrenched false narratives. Accordingly, it's the Palestine Liberation Organization, because it's the land, not a people, that needs liberating from Jews. So if the aggrieved party is not Palestinians, but Arabs, did Jews steal land from the Arab world which in 2024 is over 470 million people, if not Muslims, at over 2 billion. Clearly they did in the minds and words of many Arabs and Muslims. An Arabism or perhaps caliphate revival while not a compelling agenda in all Muslim regions today, are still the drivers behind the most dangerous players, such as Hamas. Yet the West persists in misconstruing both the victim and the grievance. They are beguiled by the tale of a small, helpless people dispossessed and oppressed by the age-old villain. This they meld with pitifully unsuited pet Western causes like black and gay empowerment, the Arab slave trade was vast and enduring, and Arab gays faced death. In truth, it is the Islamic credo barring infidels from land ownership that these Westerners are endorsing, even as they reasonably disallow other religions' claims. Alternatively, Westerners doggedly intone, two-state solution. Even though two states was the problem. The first act of the Arab League was a military attempt to thwart the creation of two states. But it's worth considering. Did Jews steal land from the Arab League or world Muslims in any sense? Here, we will only entertain a secular Western perspective. It is often noted that Jews were not the majority in Palestine when the British designated it as a Jewish homeland. In 1914, there were 689,000 inhabitants in Palestine, of which 76% were Muslim, 13% were Jews, and 10% were Christians. So to democracy-minded Westerners, establishing a Jewish homeland here perhaps sounds like a clear injustice. On the other hand, the overall population was small. Had there been only a hundred inhabitants, would the entire land go to a majority of 80? But beyond this, democracy is not a value in the Muslim world. Rather, minority ethnicity dictatorships are common. Indeed any dictatorship is minority ruled by definition. 
Hence, the Jews' minority or not could at some point have turned Israel into one more minority dictatorship in the Middle East. Instead, they were mindful of needing to constitute a majority. They had also been scarred by 2,000 years of living as a minority, for it did not go well. Gee, you think Israel might at least get a point for valuing democracy, even socialism. Nor did they take the path of ethnic cleansing of which they're accused. Millions of Arab descendants of 1948 are Israeli citizens today. By the way, the Jewish population in Europe, where Jews are being told they're from, never exceeded 10% of any country's population. It was rather in pre-mandate Palestine that their percentage of the population was its largest, 13% in 1914. And as for majority takes all, note that no one assumed Jews would govern Jerusalem just because they had been the majority there since the 1800s. But the most important point is that Arab leaders were unwilling to share a single inch of land in Palestine, even though it had never been an Arab, let alone Palestinian, country of any kind. For 400 years prior to World War I, it had simply been a borderless corner of the non-Arab Ottoman Empire. But back to Palestine's population. The fallout of a Jewish commitment to democracy was this. In Britain's Muslim-populated domains, Iraq, Jordan, and Egypt, post-colonial monarchies were established and ethnic composition disregarded. But in Palestine, demographics were critical. Hence, Arabs did all things possible to reduce the Jewish population in what was supposed to be a Jewish homeland, and the British helped them. All things included working with Hitler. 